Gentleman yells back. Ms. Delbean, you are recognized for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to all the witnesses for being with us today. Um, I would like to start by dispelling any misconceptions about this hearing and this committee's investigation. Um, you know, it is definitely not objective or impartial in any way. Um, this taxpayer-funded committee was created by Republicans more than four months ago after a group of anti-choice extremists made a series of false, unsubstantiated allegations about Planned Parenthood. Since that time, four different congressional committees and a grand jury tried and failed to uncover any evidence of wrongdoing. And their anti-choice accusers have been indicted on felony charges. Meanwhile, the majority has deliberately ignored this growing body of evidence and has clearly decided to continue spending taxpayer dollars to attack women's health and intimidate health care providers across the country. Now, in the committee's first hearing, the majority would like our constituents to believe we are conducting an objective hearing on medical research, and that couldn't be further from the truth. What we are really doing is reopening a long-settled debate about research to further a broader political agenda against a woman's right to choose. And if their attacks on science succeed, then we will all pay the price, because nearly every American has benefited from research conducted with fetal tissue. It is how we developed the first ever polio vaccine. It is how we make vaccines for rubella, chickenpox, and shingles. It is how scientists are pursuing new treatments for heartbreaking diseases like Alzheimer's and HIV. And it is all done in full compliance with the high ethical standards recommended by President Reagan's Blue Ribbon Panel in 1998, um, which were passed by Congress with broad bipartisan support. Um, so as someone, I started my career in doing medical research. Um, and I know that research using all human tissue is subject to ethical and legal standards. Um, Professor Charo, do you agree with that? I do. I do. Um, and, and, Professor, do, do you think it is appropriate to use ideology about women's rights to shape the rules that guide scientific research, and why or why not? No, I am I'm, I'm very, very unhappy at seeing a debate around abortion turn into a debate around scientific research. That is not to say I am happy about the debate about abortion either, because I also find it really offensive to imagine that women are incapable of making their own decisions about whether to have an abortion and whether or not to donate the tissue. But for sure, while that is going on, scientific research ought not be halted or hindered simply as an attempt to demonstrate one's opposition to abortion rights in a either political or public relations manner. It doesn't change anything, and I don't think that the public should be made a victim of those abortion wars. Um, can you speak a little bit about the role of institutional review boards in providing oversight on the use of hu human tissue in research? You know, how do they help ensure that research is compliant with ethical and legal standards? So, like Dr. Donovan, uh, I've been a member of an institutional review board off and on for many years. And those boards look at a variety of things, starting with how it is that people are first approached and asked about whether or not they'd like to participate in research or, in this case, to donate materials. It looks at the nature of the conversation that will be had, the documentation, because, of course, what's on paper is not the extent of the conversation. It's simply the minimum number of items that may need to be documented as far as the consent form goes. Uh, it looks at whether or not, in the end, there has been compliance. There are often research monitors that will observe a certain number of interactions in order to ensure compliance. There is an annual review that is required for each research protocol, and sometimes reviews are done more frequently depending upon the protocol. Uh, the Institutional Review Board is made up of a variety of people from both scientific and clinical and non-medical backgrounds, including law, ethics, religious studies, and members of the community who can reflect the local community culture in those discussions. And that has been something that also the, the Blue Ribbon Commission looked at and made sure that those boards were appropriate, and that was part of that, um, that 
debate that they had and the decision they had from the Commission? Yes, institutional review boards are actually required by law. Uh, it begins with the use of Federal funds that will trigger such a requirement or the uh, research into things that are regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. But most major research institutions now have extended that review beyond the legal requirements in order to give what is called a um, uh, Federal-wide assurance of all research at that institution complying with these same rules, even where not re even where not legally necessary. Thank you so much. Um, I yield back, Madam Chair. Gentlelady yields back.